The gas chromatograph is used to separate and quantify mixtures of volatile compounds in the organic laboratory. The gas chromatographs, or GCs, in the organic lab are made by the Galmac company. Each instrument is attached to an integrator that records and quantifies output from the machines. The gas chromatograph uses the principles of chromatography to separate mixtures of compounds between mobile and stationary phases. The mobile phase in a GC is helium gas. The stationary phase is a waxy liquid coated on a solid and packed into a long column inside the GC oven. The GC has a built-in detector that detects compounds as they leave the column and sends the signal from the detector to the integrator. A microliter syringe is used to introduce the sample through an injection port onto the GC column. The microliter syringe is a delicate instrument and needs to be used precisely to obtain good results. In our labs, you will use a 10 microliter syringe, but you will usually inject only one microliter of your sample. Make sure the syringe is clean by first rinsing the syringe. Rinse the syringe by pulling up seven to nine microliters of methanol and expelling the rinse into the waste container. Notice that the plunger of the syringe does not end up flush with the barrel when fully depressed. After rinsing your syringe twice with methanol, you want to move the syringe to your sample and rinse the syringe twice using your sample. Your sample will probably be in a vial with a perforated cap that the syringe needle can push right through. Repeat the rinsing of your syringe with your sample. Now you're ready to put the sample in the syringe for an injection. Once again, submerge the needle in the solution and pull up the plunger so that the sample is about halfway up the barrel of the syringe. Carefully depress the plunger until it reaches the one microliter mark on the syringe. Remove your syringe from the sample. Wipe the needle with a Kim wipe. You can verify your sample in the syringe by pulling up the plunger until you see an air bubble after your sample. Now you're ready for the injection. The GC sample is injected onto the column through an injection port located on the front of the instrument. The injection port is heated to vaporize the mixture, so be careful. Don't rest your hand on the port. It can be very hot. The injection port contains a rubber septum that the syringe needle must pierce to get onto the column. So expect resistance as you push the needle through the septum during an injection. Each GC has two injection ports and two columns containing different stationary phases. You should inject in the port indicated with an arrow on the machine. Smooth injection technique is important in obtaining a good chromatogram. To inject your sample, hold the syringe horizontally using one hand to hold the glass barrel and position the thumb of the other hand behind the plunger. Using the hand on the barrel, push the needle horizontally through the septum in the injection port until the glass barrel touches the metal port. Keep your thumb positioned behind the plunger while doing this because sometimes the heat and gas can blow the plunger back at you out of the syringe. Once the barrel hits the port, use your thumb to depress the plunger, injecting your sample onto the column. Remember again, the plunger does not end up flush with the barrel when fully depressed. When your sample has been injected, smoothly remove the syringe from the injection port. Then press start at the upper right of the integrator attached to the GC. After you see the integrator starting, you can use the time it will take to process your sample to clean the syringe for the next user. Clean the syringe just like you rinse the syringe. Pull up seven to nine microliters of water, expel that rinse into the waste container, and then follow that water rinse with two rinses of methanol. As soon as start on the integrator is pressed, the integrator begins recording time and amplitude of the detector output from the GC. In GC, the lower boiling compounds will vaporize first and move into the gas mobile phase easily. These compounds will get to the detector first and produce some of the first peaks on the integrator, each peak labeled with the specific time it stayed in the machine. This is called the retention time. Retention time corresponds closely with boiling point, so lower boiling point substances will have shorter retention times. 
The height of the peak in the GC corresponds to the amount of compound present in your mixture. Once all the mixture has passed the detector and all the peaks are printed on the integrator, press the stop button next to the start button on the upper right of the integrator. The integrator will tabulate the retention times and the areas underneath each peak and calculate the percent area of each peak detected in the mixture. You'll need to feed the paper up on the integrator by pressing shift and enter buttons simultaneously until your printout can be easily removed. A quick look at the printout and you will see peaks marked at the top with the retention times in minutes, followed by a table of retention times, area counts, peak types, and percent areas for each component. Tear off your GC printout and label it with your name and the sample information and you've acquired your first chromatogram.